now that we've got the initial installation, we've done our PO5 demonstration with uh, moving it up to OpenShift and running it within the browser simulator here locally. Uh, just to kind of make that point again, pop this up. Um, you can see again the web-based version. Mobile. This is a mobile web application. Both the client-side um, mobile representation and the desktop representation running there in the background. So that's great. But let's show you what else. Uh, what other kind of magic we have here in JBoss Developer Studio 5. Uh, one other thing that would be very important for you to note is that these guys right here, the below the first two, the first two are wizards, the next six are actually archetypes, Maven archetypes, coming from Maven Central. And so by that, you get a Maven project kind of out of the box with a single click. We wanted to make sure that Maven did not get in your way, and that was very important for us as well. So I'm going to click on the Java E6 web project. It'll make sure that I have everything installed as it needs to be, and I already have a server installed. I'm going to hit Next. I'm going to just take the defaults here, but I'm going to hit Next and explain a couple things. One is, if you notice, the group ID is typically your package name, and, that, and the package name is here. The artifact ID is typically the project name, and the version, 0.0.1 uh, .0 snapshot. Obviously, while I'm in development, that makes perfect sense, but at some point, you may publish this artifact uh, when you think it's ready to your environment. Uh, and therefore, that would be a different version number, and you can update that in the POM XML. Uh, we also have a default profile of ARQ, JBoss AS Remote. ARQ is Archelian. This will become more important later, and we'll show you that in a second. And Enterprise is false, because right now I'm targeting uh, the community JBoss application server. If I was targeting EAP, the Enterprise version, Enterprise would equal true there. I'll leave that for false for now. Went finish. And it's going to go through the process of using the archetype to produce on disk the actual um, the actual project in question, and then it has to import that project into JBoss Developer Studio, activate not only the Maven capabilities associated with that project, but also the facets and some other tooling. For instance, this this project has JPA tooling, JAXRS tooling associated with it. Those facets have to get turned on. So you can see it's going through the process here and importing it. That'll take a few more moments. We'll just let let it let it run. Okay, it'll pop up here in a second. Tell me, hey, we're finished. But while it's doing its job, if we drill down on this guy, you can see there's a index.html. All right, index.html. This is a, a JSF application because this is standard E6. Nothing. Nothing too fancy here. Standard E6. You can see there's the JSF pieces of the, of the application. I can see that there's JAXRS endpoints inside this application as well. I can drill down on the Java resources, and I can see that there is a member registration. This guy backs up the JSF page. Uh, here's the JPA entity, the member. You can see at entity, at ID, at not null. These are known as bean validations that are part of Java E6. And those are important as well because uh, one of the things we'll see later on in the Rich Faces demonstration is that these bean validations can be inherited by the client itself, the browser itself, when you use Rich Faces. By default, they operate on the server side here. And I can also look at the REST endpoint. So you can see at path, members, get, returns XML. If you look for a specific member, then we'll return that one member right there. And notice the at inject right here. That is the CDI magic injecting the energy ma energy manager into this JAXRS endpoint. Let's go and run this application. Run as on server. Okay, and finish. That of course is going to bundle that thing up, produce you know produce using Maven the WAR file, put that WAR file out there on the application server, get it deployed, and then pop up the little internal browser. Now this application looks just like the other one we were showing you with the PO5, and that's because we wanted to show you, in the case of, let me pop this screen back open, we wanted to, be able to show you an e, pure E6, the same application with HTML5 front end, JavaScript front end, think jQuery front end, a rich faces version of that, and a Google Web Toolkit version of that. So we have all three of those, so you can kind of see that same E6 application augmented with jQuery and JavaScript and HTML5, augmented with rich faces, or augmented with Google Web Toolkit but the same basic logic, so you can kind of see the same basic logic we used again and again. Let's go ahead and add ourselves here, or myself, one, and, ding, ding, and there we go. And then if you drill down these rest endpoints, you can kind of see there's the XML associated with that guy, and then this guy, John Smith, and then I can look at all of them, and you can see there's the rest endpoints right there, and those JAXRS, right? JAXRS right here, list all members, because I went for members, 
and I wanted to, you notice it was just a basic get request. This one has a get request with a path. It means if I have a path ID, okay, let's try this. Notice if I put a path, uh, or sorry, an, an argument there of one, I get a specific record. If I say none of that, I get all the records, and that's pretty much the magic right here. One thing to note, if you notice the URL, notice the little REST right here. All right, that actually comes from, let's go find it to make sure we, um, we state it correctly. And let me make sure I got this right. So web XML and source, and right there. So if you notice in, J in Java EE land, Java E6, you basically write a servlet, or sorry, you include this servlet. You'd have to build the servlet. And then you would simply say that the prefix for all your REST endpoints, your JAX or S endpoints, or slash REST. This could be any phrase that you want that's you know proper for a URL there. Okay, and that's that application. And um, kind of neat one neat thing, you know, if you do want to see the mobile version of it, guess what? This application is pure E6. It's not been specialized in any way. So the mobile version of it looks just like the desktop version of it. No difference there. Standard Java E6. Um, but again, this little browser simulator is incredibly powerful. It allows you to do things like uh, test out what what your application would look like. And here I am running on Windows with a little iPhone looking simulator thing. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say about this particular guy? Oh, I want to show you the testing component of it. That's very important. If you right click on the project and go to Maven and then select Maven Profiles, in Beta 2 you should see that RAQ, Archelian, JBoss AS Remote, is selected. This application needs to be deployed on the server. If I go back over here, you can see it is in fact deployed. So that's important that that guy's employ, uh, deployed. And that means I can now right click and say Run As JUnit Test and let it do its thing. And let's go, let's go. There we go. And there it is. So you can see we get a green bar. And now the application not only is deployed, but we can run tests against it. And this is actually taking advantage of our Killian. If we open up the test endpoint here, you can see test register. It's going to basically do a, uh, a registration of a, of a person, in this case Jane Doe here, uh, and make sure that they get, they get inserted into the database correctly. That's what this test does. Again, taking advantage of CDI, add inject, but you can see run with our Killian.class here. Um, this, of course, takes advantage of shrink wrap, which produces the interim war file that gets pushed over and deployed. All right. Well, that's the introduction to Java E6 web application. We'll show you more in a moment.